Hello and welcome back to Ready to Ride and to the second of the three warm-up sessions. As I said before, it's a really good idea to get to know all three of the different warm-ups that I'm providing for you and not necessarily do all three of them but combine different bits of each of them to come up with your own warm-up plan. Also make sure you're familiar with the introductory session and making sure you can set up your body in preparation for doing your warm-up and the main exercises. Also get used to setting yourself up before you get on your horse but the more you can get into that mindset of setting up each segment of your body before you start doing any work the better. So without further ado, let's get going. We're going to start at the top. I always seem to find myself starting at the top. It just seems natural to me to start with the head and neck. We're going to do an exercise called neck retractions. Retractions means taking your neck backwards. So basically it's a very unattractive exercise. You're drawing your chin straight backwards. There are two cheats that people do with this exercise. One is to drop down and one is to look upwards you want to literally go straight backwards. A physio I used to work with said, imagine you're closing the chin drawer, literally sliding backwards. And this might seem like a really strange exercise to do, but it's a really good exercise for strengthening your deep neck flexors. And those are little tiny muscles that sit between the vertebrae in your neck. They provide a lot of deep stability to your neck and really good for riding, particularly if you're doing something like sitting trots, helps to reduce some of that head nod that we're all probably very familiar with seeing riders do and not particularly attractive. So the stronger your deep neck flexors, the better the stability for your neck. Then we're going to move on to, once again, mobilising your upper body. Um, and this time though in a lunge position, that so just makes it a little bit more challenging for your balance, but also your coordination. So arms across the chest, and as you're turning, you want to keep your shoulders level and your headlights forwards. But because you're in the lunge position, you also need to focus on making sure that front knee stays lined up with your second and third toe. And actually, this is a little bit harder than it might seem. It's very easy for the body and then the knee to all start going together. So keep your lower body still as your upper body turns. And this is really good practice for doing things like lateral work on the horse where you want your upper body is probably doing something a little bit different to your lower body. When you're happy you've loosened up nicely in both directions, swap over and make sure you've got the same degree of mobility with your legs the other way around. And it's surprising often how actually with your legs in a different combination position, you're not as mobile or you're not as well balanced. So this is a really good little exercise just to sharpen up your balance and your control. Same principles apply, level shoulders, headlights forwards, front knee over second and third toe. Okay, face the front again, feet back underneath you. We're going to do um, an whole body loosening exercise called the upper body roll and a lot of you will find this quite difficult to really relax into but it's called an upper body roll for a reason you want to feel like you are rolling through the movement it's very simple I'm going to demonstrate it and then talk you through it So I am literally dropping my hands gently down to my knees, keeping my knees soft, rolling my hands over to one side, coming back up, and repeating the same thing to the other side. Forwards with soft knees, over to the side and back up again. So forwards, over to the side, back up again. You want to ideally stay gently looking down as you do go into the movement, so the whole of your upper body drops forward. I'm having to look at the camera so that you can hear me a little bit better. But the more your head and neck are relaxed as well, the better the loosening off. And really work at keeping your knees soft. If your knees are really rigid, it locks through your upper back, or your lower back, sorry. So keep your knees soft and you'll be able to roll much better. Okay. We're then going to go on to the walking exercise again, which we did in the, the first introduction session. We're going to do it in a wide position. And I think this is another really good coordination exercise. So once again, choose your diagonal pair that you're going to work with. So for me, I always seem to go with right arm, left leg. And this time you're doing arms out to the side. 
and the real challenge with this one is to make sure you don't turn into a windmill so it's very easy for the whole body to start to go so although this is a warm-up in terms of getting joints lubricated and joints and soft tissues taken through their full movement and circulation and so on it's also a way of priming your body for the control that you're expecting from it in the movements to come. So you want to start setting the standard now, keeping your trunk still as your arms and legs are working. Keep the pelvic floor onto floor three if you can. Keep your headlights forwards. Activate the ropes that run down between your ribs and your pelvis. So get your brain in gear through your warm up and then you'll find it follows on into the other exercises much more easily. Okay. When you feel that you're starting to get a bit breathless or your hands are starting to lose circulation, it's a good time to stop. And then stay in this position for one final exercise and that is an adductor stretch. Your adductors are your inner thigh muscles and they work very hard when you're riding. So they're a really good muscle to be stretching. Really, really simple. I tend to have my hands onto my headlights for this because I think it's just a nice way of getting a bit of feedback but also somewhere to put my hands. So if you go over onto one, leg so you're bending that knee and you should have a bit of a stretch down the inner thigh if you don't lean over towards that foot and you should feel an increased stretch watch that you don't tip forward though instead like with the previous introduction session you want to make sure you're aiming for about 10 seconds with each stretch and repeating it three times if you find that stretch is something you really need to do a lot of, there will be a specific stretching session on this channel. As I think a lot of us probably don't stretch enough as part of our warm-up routine, so it's a good one to have a series of little exercises at your fingertips to do that. Okay, now we go to the other side. So same thing again, over onto the knee. If you don't feel the stretch, Take the shoulder towards the foot. And come back up. Have a little pause, and then off you go again. Same thing over into the stretch. Another way of increasing the stretch is probably quite obvious, but is to have your feet that little bit further apart. But some people find it quite hard to balance, and sometimes if they're too far apart, it's quite tricky to come back up again from that position, certainly without any elegance. Okay, so when you finish that, bring your feet back up underneath you, so your feet are back into your hip width apart position, and there we go, you've completed the second of the warm-up sessions. There's one more to go for you to have a look at, um, and then see what you think of which one you prefer to do, or which what mix you prefer to do. So I uh, hope to see you again soon, and thanks for joining me with this one.